Good day, good people. It's a great day to pick up a good book, so I'm here to suggest your new fave, and it's called Atomic Habits by James Clear. Now, Atomic Habits was published in 2018, so I may be a little tardy for the party, but if you're anything like me, a good book is always on time, word to Ja Rule and Ashanti. Let's get into why you should read this book. I have one rule when it comes to self-help books, and it's that if I cannot apply it, I do not buy it. And I'm happy to report that I eagerly devoured this 253-page manual, and I quickly implemented the gems inside of this text into my own life. So if you would like to hear more about atomic habits, how to build them, why we have them, why we need them, how to get rid of those bad ones, stay tuned. The main message in this book is that small habits, positive or negative, compound over time and impact, largely impact, the lives that our future selves will enjoy. We have a number of habits that we employ day in and day out to make our lives easier and to solve for reoccurring problems in our environment. For instance, you brush your teeth to avoid social backlash and to avoid a hefty dental bill down the road. You drink coffee to feel alert in the morning. Whatever your habits are, you have them because they are tied to some kind of reward. So as I stated before, we've carried out behaviors since the beginning of time that increase our access to primary rewards like sex, food, and water. We are also looking for secondary rewards like power, fame, love, friendship, personal satisfaction, and the list can go on from there. Our whole goal behind having habits is to reap some sort of benefit, get some sort of reward back. There's a problem with our pursuit. Our unproductive habits tend to give us instant gratification with long-term consequences, and our productive habits tend to be unsatisfying upfront, yielding a positive reward down the line. Now, in the grand design, all things are working together, and it's unnecessary to categorize our experiences as good or bad, but for the sake of advancement, you need to look at your life and think about your daily behaviors. It's always helpful to think about your behaviors as unproductive, productive, or neutral. If you are the sum of your decisions, when you add them up, how's it looking? This process of introspection, really looking at the why behind our daily behaviors can be difficult, but I recommend doing it now and doing it often. Being honest and transparent with yourself is key. All right, I have plenty of takeaways from this book, but for the sake of time, I'm gonna share my top five. This is where the spoilers come in, so if you want to read this book first before you check out this review, please do that. If not, don't touch that down. My first takeaway from this book is that we all have habits, but we tend to overlook the bad habits because they provide instant gratification and the consequences come later. The good news is we do not have to use our willpower to overcome these not so good habits. In fact, the people who are the most successful aren't using some sort of super willpower that the rest of the world lacks. They are automating the good habits and making the bad habits avoidable. How do you do this in your own life? How do you implement this into your own practice? For me, I'm starting with a list of productive and unproductive habits. One of my most productive habits is daily physical activity. And one of the ways that I automate this daily physical activity, well, the book says that there are four ways in which you can make a habit stick. Right? Make it obvious, make it attractive, make it easy, make it satisfying. To make exercising physical activity easier I put out my clothes the night before and I also put out any equipment that I would need for the workout this puts working out into my environment and cues me in the morning to start start working out to make my fitness routine obvious I write it down the night before or I'm usually following some sort of plan that gives me guidance I usually get a good night's rest and knock out my workouts first thing in the morning which makes me feel like a winner and that makes working out feel super satisfying that's it for my first takeaway the good habits we need to put them in our faces put them in our environment um, give ourselves cues throughout the day so whether that's tuning in to a workout or a fitness program on YouTube. You could also be looking at your favorite fitness influencer on um, Instagram. These things kind of help us with 
becoming the type of person who doesn't miss a workout. Number two, my second takeaway is that bad habits can be hard to overcome because of the feedback loop and the misconceptions that we need to unlearn about having habits. All right, so what is the feedback loop? For every action, there is a reaction. Basically, you get what you give. You want to feel entertained, so you binge watch a TV show. You are entertained, so you continue to binge watch TV shows. You want to feel alert, so you drink coffee. You start to associate caffeine with being bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, and so you continue to drink coffee, and all of a sudden, it's the best part of waking up. The habit has become automated. It's a cycle. Over and over again, we follow these habits. We are but hamsters running on a wheel, guys, if we do not get control of what is unconscious. We have to know the why. What you doing? Why you doing it? Hmm? What you doing? Why you doing it? In order to get out of that cycle, get away from a bad habit, you have to break the feedback loop. Now, what are some um, misconceptions about habits that we have? One of the main misconceptions is that habits make our lives boring and monotonous, and that if you are always following a habit or a system, you won't have time for freedom. When actually putting your non-negotiables on autopilot gives you more room for the stuff you really want to do so in order to have true freedom you have to have the habits that you need to follow for your for your overall well-being you need to have those kind of habits on autopilot so that you can have time for moving through life spontaneously and you know creating your own adventure that's it that's my second second takeaway moving on to number three now number three really made me pop my top it's not like I'm unaware I'm very aware I'm very woke in these streets um, but to read this from a different perspective was very enlightening and my third takeaway is that human beings are easy to program and we're often being programmed to do not so good things to carry out unproductive behaviors. Our brains are hardwired for rewards. Like kids in candy stores, we believe that bigger is better. Our brains are hardwired to search for primary rewards like food, water, and sex. We also are looking for secondary rewards like power, friendship, personal satisfaction, money, fame. And what's, what's the problem with looking for these things, right? We are no longer content with the real thing. We are searching for what's called the supernormal stimulus. We are searching for supernormal stimuli in our environment because everything has been expanded so that our reward centers are like jumping off the charts, right? Ooh. What is a supernormal stimulus? A supernormal stimulus is any heightened version of reality, something that piques our interest as human beings. Some examples of supernormal stimuli are video games, hard liquor, uh, reality TV shows, junk food, pornography, gossip websites, and the list goes on and on. Why is it easy to habituate watching playing, being entertained by these supernormal stimuli, instant gratification is why. The girls are hotter, the money is faster, the food tastes better, the pleasure is immediate. Social media is full of supernormal stimuli. You have these enhanced bodies, you have the omission of the not so sunny side of life. You have all of these things that are wildly entertaining, very stylish, very attractive, but may lack substance. The supernormal stimuli definitely overstimulates our reward center and gets us involved in this feedback loop where we continue to want more and more and more. When I was reading this text, I started to feel like instant gratification is the trap. We gotta stop wanting it today and really think about the long-term benefits of being a little bit more disciplined. We gotta start thinking about the long-term consequences or the long-term benefits of having really good habits. That's, that's it, that's my third takeaway. Be careful out here. 
My fourth takeaway is that time is the maker of men and where your discipline and commitment lies always shows. Don't, don't procrastinate today. I read a tweet that said, procrastination is the arrogant assumption that God will give you more time to do what he called you to do today. Stop, stop procrastinating, stop procrastinating. You have free will and you can use your free will in the right direction, right? Most of the time we hear about free will and it's like, oh, I can do whatever I want, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do what I want, free will, free will. But also you can use your free will in the right direction to be disciplined and to make your dreams come true. So use your free will in the right direction. And I know sometimes this is hard because we are socialized to follow the crowd, to run in packs, to do what the herd is doing, all of those things, right? We're socialized that if the majority is looking for the same thing, right? We have the same reward center. We're all looking for sex, water, and food. And if the majority is going left, then the food, water, and sex has to be to the left. So I'm gonna go to the left. No. Don't do that. That's inactivity. We are all individuals and just because people are going to the left doesn't mean going to the left is the right thing for you. So what you must do is find out your true path and stick to that path no matter what. Because I guarantee that when you start moving away from the herd, moving away from the pack, and start to define yourself for yourself, you might find yourself as an outlier. You might find yourself feeling alone. You might find yourself reclusive and on this journey, right? But you must persist, you must keep going. Remember that it's easy, convenient, attractive to do the wrong thing up front and it gets ugly later. When you start compounding the unproductive behaviors and habits, it leads to an unproductive life. That is the end result. So make sure that you're always doing what's best for you, even if nobody else is doing what's best, right? And what's best for you individually might not be what's best for somebody else. You just do what you're supposed to do, okay? That's it for my fourth takeaway. My fifth takeaway is walk slowly, not backwards. So James Clear shares this quote, and I'm gonna share the quote because it just quickly became a mantra of mine, which is don't put up zero, okay? Don't put up zero, hashtag don't put up zero. All changes lead to big results. If you want to start a habit today, a good habit, start small. There's nothing wrong with starting small. You wanna run a marathon, start by running two minutes a day, then move up to one mile a day, and so on and so forth. If you are already doing great things, you can practice what's called habit stacking to make the habit that you want to adopt stick faster. You brush your teeth in the morning. If meditation is a habit that you want to adopt, make sure that you're meditating for two minutes after or for two minutes before. If your goal is to drink more water, tell yourself that immediately after lunch, I'm gonna have 16 ounces of water. Don't start over, keep stacking. It may get boring, but so is finding yourself in an endless loop of self-harming behavior. Very unsatisfying, would not recommend. What I do recommend is not giving up. Being mindful of the fact that you can make a difference in your life with small changes along the way. It doesn't have to be some grand statement. It doesn't have to be some grand declaration. What we normally say is that I'm gonna lose 40 pounds in four weeks. We give ourselves a goal that is almost insurmountable. And so then we start feeling defeated where we're not seeing changes up front. So sometimes we gotta look for the change beyond the scale. We gotta look for the change beyond what we think it normally looks like. And if you find yourself on a path that you know is the right path for you, but it gets boring, find a positive way to break up the monotony. For instance, when I'm working out and I start to get bored, um, I usually implement a different style of physical activity. So if I'm bored with running, I'll, I'll put on my skates and I'll skate instead. If I'm bored with skating, I'll move to yoga. If I'm not feeling yoga, I might do Pilates. Not feeling Pilates, I'll take my dog for a walk, and so on and so forth. Always remember that it's not necessarily about accomplishing the goal, right? Goals are nice, but goals end. Right? But if you adopt a lifestyle, you become the type of person that has 
well. You become the type of person that doesn't skip a workout. You become the type of person that writes a best selling novel. My parting advice for you is again, continue to stack. Don't stop wherever you are, keep going. I'm sure that you're already doing great things and you can continue to do great things by starting small. It All it takes is an Atomic Habit to transform your life. That's my review of Atomic Habits by James Clear. It's really a 253 page manual on how to create habits that are gonna take you to the next level. And beyond the habit, again, it's really becoming a type of person that doesn't disappoint yourself and the type of person that is disciplined. Everything that you want is on the other side of your discipline and on the other side of your commitments. Push yourself beyond your perceived limitation. You have what it takes to be successful. I believe in myself, so I believe in you. If I could do it, you could do it. You can create lasting results if you move away from goals and towards becoming. I want to have this type of life, so I am becoming the type of person that deserves it. And that was a super important takeaway for me. This life is nothing but a result of your habits. And a quote that I found interesting in the book says, we adopt behaviors for all sorts of reasons, but it's important to note that behavior that's incongruent with the self, the heart of who you are, cannot last. So we want to make sure that we are creating habits that are in alignment with who we want to be in the future and who we are today. I read a quote in the book that said, if we do not make the unconscious conscious, it will direct our lives and we'll call it fate. This life is not a seeing to believe experience, it is a believe then see experience. Whatever we are actively believing, actively pursuing, actively seeking is going to come to us eventually. We are the makers, we are the creators of our reality. We are the creator and the creation. Sometimes we think that fate is just happening to us, but we really have the power and the power lies in our habits and our daily behaviors. This is a tough concept to digest because that's really for real the weight of your own world on your shoulders. Knowing that the responsibility is yours can be terrifying. But with this awareness also comes freedom. You are powerful. Please stop giving away your power and your free will. Whatever life you want to live, you got the power to do it. I'm going to sign off right there. I feel like I've done a great deal of explaining why this book is great and why I think you should pick it up and read it. So pick it up and read it. And let me know what you think in the comment section. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.